we're about to unravel is sitting inside that box, along with a few other short side mods in the other boxes. But right now we're going to assemble this boat. I'm going to show you what it looks like right outside of the box, all the way till it's built version. We're going to go step by step and elaborate on certain parts of it so you get the best understanding of what you're going to get if you get this boat. So check it out. Okay, first off, you're going to get a foot pump, which is, it pumps up everything just fine. You get a standard set of oars. They also work great. These are parts of the subframe. We'll get to that later. Right here, this is a pretty well woven bag full of all the gear you need to assemble the boat. Ugh. This is able to be carried. I mean, I'm just, a, I'm just a regular man. Uh, I pick the whole thing up. That's the whole boat right there. I mean, there's a few other things in these boxes here, but that's legit. I just picked the whole boat out of here. So the whole boat comes in this bag, nice to unravel. So, I mean, whenever you're gonna take it out or stow it, I mean, it can stow just like this. It stows just light like this, this is the entire boat. The first thing you see when you open it up is the pontoons, the wrapped in cellophane. So just be very careful when you are taking the cellophane off. I'm obviously taking it off with a knife, just don't wanna cut the pontoon itself. But the, you know, in first view of the product, I'm pretty impressed with the pontoon. So the first thing we we're doing here, we're just pumping it up takes quite a few pumps to get the initial one because they're vacuum sealed dry and flat so they're going to take initially a long time to pump up like that but unless you're going to vacuum seal them again with a pump that won't take near as long okay, so to pump off the next the pontoon this is the side that's i mean so check these out it has a kill saver all the way down the bottom so if the stuff wasn't already tough enough now I'm even more confident to use this thing. It's really actually very hard to sink. Like you don't know, like people use these boats generally specifically in like rivers. Like you ever see the Skookum still header or even any sort of like the Seagull models of boats are generally made for like smaller lakes and rivers, like real skinny water where there's stuff that can actually come out and puncture you. They don't get punctured. Very, very highly likely unless you really try or you just, you know, really have a fail day. But this just boosts my confidence even more. I literally, you literally can just, hit anything with that piece of nothing's gonna puncture that slay of a damn knife right here these are actually locked gauge so you can actually press these in and turn and they'll just deflate a lot of air pressed out right there. there's a lot of high compression air right in there so you're able now the pontoons are put up you're actually able to be carrying them right here your you can carry the front your friend can carry the back they both have handles this is made just to be picked up and taken in and offshore at will but this is just the part this is just the pontoons they're independent from the actual frame that's why they call us a frameless boat. So we are going to actually now put in the subframe. Okay guys, what you are seeing here <clears throat> is a slat, okay? A very, very nice, well done aluminum slat. But they don't really hardly weigh anything. And on top of it, they come with like a sea deck. This is, I was wondering what this was, if this was like, um, I can feel it, that's a foam. That is a non-skid, very nice, check that foam out. I don't know if you can see the detail in it. But that's, that's a grip foam. That's awesome. So the boat deck is comprised of these four independent slats. Now they go in order. You see the buckles on the side over there. Those are actually to hold any objects that are prominent specifically the battery if you're gonna run a bow mount and trolley motor, or the gas tank if you're gonna run one in the back. But they all stack up, they're all the exact same size. There's one in the front that has specific holes to fit on the front subframe, oh, and then so obviously sick. those four holes in the back to fit on the back subframe. Got a strap down. That's awesome. All the slats align in sight right there. You have you know stickers right there showing you which ones go where from D1 to D4 but they all connect. They slide right inside a little groove and they all should line up specifically as so. Now that bag that we set aside for a second, now's the time to break it out. We have 
two ore slats. This does come with ores right here. Okay. And these would be the ore slats. Um, with the locking pins and everything. I'm almost positive. Huh, a repair kit. And an extra hose fitting. Perfect, because I'm gonna buy an electric hose fitting. I'm gonna buy an electric airhead pump, and I'm gonna put this fitting right in that thing and blow these pontoons up like nothing. It'll take minutes, seconds. And we also have um, the repair boat for glue, and we have enough actual denier PVC material in here to patch very, very sizable pumps. Now, in terms of how hard it is to repair an aluminum hole or a fiberglass hole versus how hard it is to repair a hole like this, not very hard at all, okay? Okay. And I cannot express enough about the quality of this boat for how much money it is. It's a freaking steal. Okay. As the deck goes, 970 pounds. Okay, so it's closer to 1,000 pounds. I was wrong. It's freaking almost a thousand pounds. Wow. My gosh. Okay. A six horsepower motor is its capacity as far as like limits. So that's pretty sick. About an 80 pound motor. That's awesome. That's this boat should pretty screw with a six. Okay. Is, I mean, a nice back plate, nice solid back plate, not just a piece of wood. I mean, this is wood, but it's got this nice grip and this nice back plate. That's, that's freaking awesome. This is an awesome transom. likely has to be the hardware yeah. and some very very long allen wrenches which is cool too so those bolts go there that's a lot of bolts man Four short screws, four long screws, these ring nuts, and these two brackets. A transom. Take the transom brackets. Make sure you put the transom inside the brackets. Okay, do not set the transom outside the brackets. Now put four bolts in, and then those those ring nuts, loosely put them on, but don't tighten them just yet. Make sure you have your drill set to where it's not gonna strip out the screw. Just give it a nice enough setting to where it has slack when you drill into the frame. And make sure the bottom bolts are secured way before you secure the top bolts where the ring nuts are or the holes for the bottom will align properly. Once the bottom is properly secured, then you can tighten the ones with the ring nuts on them. And then that completes the transom. Very nice solid transom, has a lot of good qualities that I wish other boats had. All right, guys, check out this transom, right? So it's got this whole big back, you know, support here. This is like unbendable. This is not gonna bend. These are solid, ridiculous, act, like for the transom support itself. On top of it, this is where your clamp seat and this is a full like a clamped area so i mean i don't know if you had trolling motors where like you turn it too wide to go in and you know quick maneuver and the trolling motor wanted to like fly off the transom no matter how tight you screwed it screwed it onto the wood so this here little lip here i mean that's meant to catch it to stop it on top of that it has, it has a little section here that you can actually hook on stuff even more so if you wanted to tie a rope here for security just in case you got you're worried about your motor blowing the transom off or the transom coming off. If you were worried about it, you could hook something here and it would be theoretically safe. Or you just hook this here for utility purposes for whatever reason, but that's there. But this is a very nice deal with a hole number right there and the back plate here. So essentially the wood part of the transom is never going to get damaged and it's already preserved in, uh, in paint.
The next step in this whole thing is to put the anchoring pins. So that's really important for the subframe pieces. When you slide them through those uh, plastic brackets right there, you know, that are welded into the pontoons, on the bottom of those brackets there's a hole. And these lock pins make sure that those poles don't come out of the, you know, the area there. So just lock them in place like so. The rings go over I the back you. end. And so that's what really completes the subframe as far as linking it from the back and front of your boat. Oh man, it's so sick. So what we have now is the decking system. You guys are wondering about it, possibly. This is what we got. It actually adjusts, okay? With these these tensioning knobs, obviously these, these, these quick release screws. You can move this bar up and down to your desired height. You can move these up and down to your desired height. You don't have to run these bars at all, but because just for demonstration purposes, I put them on, okay? But you can essentially have stuff. So if you have a tackle box that's yay high or yay high, you can move these bars down to make sure your box doesn't fly off. You can move these bars in front here to have like a full fronting bar system. You can actually probably buy extra bars if you need one just to have more security. Um, and actually, you can do this exact same thing on the back. You can have a full system around the entire boat that bars the entire boat. I don't have to make a DIY uh, rod bar. It's, the boat already comes with one. It's freaking awesome. It already integrates directly into the deck. It's got a pretty simple yet ingenious seat post that it came with. Um, so this comes with a piece here that mounts around the main section. When you put it in here, you can actually adjust it and tighten it to your desired height. Although I likely, given my, my experiences in my last boat, I'm likely to keep it just like this. And then obviously my seat will be attached to this already, but it's, it's, it's a reclining seat post. I mean, you can actually pressure this thing to go up. So it's, it's adjustable even more. Oh, that's pretty cool. Please read the Aquas manual in depth, or at least skim over it before you start to put the build together. Um, I'm now about to stall the seat post. If I had read the manual, I would have known that this has been much easier to do this while the slats were not installed in the boat. But since I'm so far in this build and in this video, I'm gonna show you specifically how you're gonna install it. Start by making a stencil right where you want your seat. Go up and get on the deck and sit on the seat and find out where it's gonna be most comfortable for you and where your arm movement's gonna be in order to like grab the tiller for your motor or trolling motor. Once that's done, you know, obviously drill four holes right where your stencils were. You need four screws. The wing nuts that come within the packet are specifically made for this seat. That metal plate that I used to create the stencil right here, that actually goes on the bottom. And so we wanna make sure that's mounted there because it gives it a lot of extra strength on the sled itself. All right, and it came with a seat. So, pretty cool. All right, I've been using seats like this for more or less my entire time using small boats, and they're pretty comfortable.
Just a few things to go over that I missed earlier, but I want to cover now before the video ends. These, um, they already have like welded on nuts on the back, so these just bolt right in. You don't have to worry about screwing anything in. These just go right in. Okay, and also there are these nylon straps. They strap from the middle part. Of the, this, this grasp with the clasp here, this is specifically here for the D-ring mounted on the pontoon. So it's a pretty big part of the frame sticking together the way they, I mean, that's, that's how it attaches in the middle part. So very, um, this is a pretty integral part, so don't forget to do this, okay? These are included in the kit in that bag. Aquas has a full manual. It's actually a pretty good detailed manual. It teaches you how to put the boat together step by step in the event that there's some uh, disclarity in this video. It comes with all the parts and everything that it should have. They have a really, really good customer service and uh, working relationship. They have good media reps. I'm also available if you The first buildup that you do is gonna be the longest one, but after you get a lot of this stuff assembled, you can leave a lot of it together, okay? You can, um, and then that way when you do actually go out to reassemble this thing out of your car, out of your RV, or out of whatever, you can just kind of slap it together. Like the transom, I'm leaving that thing on. Uh, the mount for the seat, I'm also leaving that on. A few of these other things, I'm gonna kind of just leave as is. And then I'm also gonna get, and I'm also gonna get an air pump that's gonna blow up these pontoons very, very quickly. Cause that was the longest part of the install and the actual assembly of the boat was actually pumping the pontoons cause they're big. So once, I mean the pont, if the pontoons air up very, very quickly and then I'm able to attach the deck very, very quickly. Actually, once it's all done and you're used to how this boat is gonna be put together, it assembles in minutes. So. All right guys, thank you much. Stay tuned for the underwater demos because that's what's coming up next.